Hi, I'm Will from Tested.com. Today I am taking apart an Xbox 360S. This is the brand new 250 gig Xbox, the Valhalla code name. Uh, so we're going to take it apart and see what makes it tick right now. I've not taken apart one of the new 360s before, but I have read Anantech's awesome breakdown that he posted last week, as well as taken apart original Xboxes of a couple of different varieties. So I have a, a variety of tools here. Very important, a super long flathead screwdriver. I have uh, spudgers, the tools that you usually use to take apart iPhones and Kindles and stuff like that, uh, as well as my trusty Leatherman in case I need a pair of pliers, and uh, ever-present, the multi-tip screwdriver with a bunch of different Torx heads. And finally, the classic strip of blue tape for sticking the screws to so that I don't lose them and keep them in the right order. The very first thing we're going to do is take apart, take the hard drive out. So it's accessed with this little door on the bottom. Uh, basically, you just grab this piece of ribbon and give it a little tug and it releases the, the connector and the SATA cables. So put that off to the side. Uh, next up is removing this plastic kind of undercarriage protector thing. I don't know exactly what it's for. I think it's just to look cool. It's a little bit trickier on this side because there's nowhere to grab. So if you look into the louvers, then you can actually see there's about 10 of these little connectors that snap into place. You just want to pop them out without hopefully gouging up the finish too bad. There we go, that sounded breaky. I'm gonna see if I can get down in the edge here and see where the see where the cracks are. I can't exactly tell what's holding this. Oh, I see. It looks like it's holding into the plastic sides. This is the part that people, oh, there we go. Okay, so I'm just popping it up underneath this edge on the inside. I'm gonna get a sturdier spudger and do some ever so gentle popping. Boy, this is definitely not designed to be user serviceable. Not that we're really surprised. Okay, so I got the first tab out. If you can, if you can see, the tabs tuck in underneath the chromed edge of the 360. So, of the of the kind of lower bezel, for lack of a better term. More popping. I think I've given up uh, on non non damaging approaches to this. So I'm going to try getting a little more physical with it. Ow, that's pointy. Oh yeah, there we go, that's the stuff. So using two tools at once uh, is actually helping a lot more than just trying to get it with one. So I'm gonna look under here now, see exactly how this is held. Oh, there we go, it's just little pegs. Uh, so this is this is the part that, that will tell you that I voided my warranty when, they, uh, when I send this back to the Microsoft at some point. What I'm doing is just taking a flathead screwdriver up here and giving it a little bit of a twist to pop this loose. And, oh, looks like one more maybe. There we go. One more, uh, and it just broke off. Okay, so what they do is they have these little hard plastic guys in here that snap into place. It's not going to hurt the Xbox taking it apart. It'll still work. It's just not going to you know, go back together as it was from the manufacturer. So they'll know that I've done something. I'm going to do the same thing again on the bottom. More poppering. So this is taking a little more force than I usually like to do when I'm taking something apart. Um, but sometimes it's unavoidable, unfortunately. And I'm definitely breaking off these pins. Hopefully it won't make the Xbox look too hoopty when I put it back together. The top and bottom are off, as you can see. So hard drive slot down here on the bottom. This is the top. Uh, you know, I realize that this metal thing, this chromed piece of plastic around the edge probably needs to come off before I can go any further. So I'm gonna pop that off. You can just bend them back a little bit and then lift and it'll pop right off. Just one more, I think, oh, maybe not. Yeah, right there, bam. Uh, hold on, one more. Oh yeah. So there's that. Uh, so, so far we've taken off like 35 pieces of plastic. Uh, I'm gonna flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Uh, same kind of connectors. There are these little hooks. I don't know if you can see them right there, but you just kind of pop it up and then lift a little bit and it just oh, pops off all at once. How convenient. Next thing I need to do is take the Wi-Fi adapter off. Getting my unscrew on. And this is 802.11n, ladies and gentlemen. 
So we just tested this out, um, still kind of semi-unassembled with the giant bomb guys to see if uh, the 360, the new 360, would work without the wireless adapter. It does. It boots up. Uh, you can see the whole video over at giantbomb.com. But the short version is it works, and the menu options for the wireless stuff are missing. So does that mean anything? Not really, other than the fact that Microsoft probably has the option of updating this without the, three, the, the wireless at some point in the future. So uh, let's continue on our horrible journey of disassembly here. Uh, terrifying and scary though it might be. And I'm looking down here in this gap. I don't think you'll be able to see it because it's too dark. Uh, but you can actually see the first couple of clips that will release the faceplate. Uh, you know, the, the new 360 doesn't have the removable faceplates, so you lose the option to customize, or pimp, I believe is the, the phrasing that was originally used, your Xbox. Uh, however, if you take it apart, you can still remove the front bezel, which is what we're going to do right now. Actually, this is an interesting approach. Let's uh, try... I'm going to take one of my plastic spudgers because it hopefully won't gouge up the surface too much. Use it to kind of hold. There we go. Ah, now I can see the, the next set of clips down. There we go. Here we go. Perfect. Okay, that's not coming out now. So these guys are popping out. I say that with a little more optimism than I might feel. Okay. Aha! I think I've gotten it. Oh yeah, that's the stuff right there. Uh, this is the cable that holds the uh, uh, that controls the the capacitive touch sensor and probably the. Uh, um, eject button as well. This is the cable that plugs into the main Xbox unit right here. Uh, and then this, this guy right here is a printed cable uh, that goes all the way around here. And then this assembly up here is the eject button. You can see this over here is the, is the button that you use to sync your controller, uh, to sync wireless controllers with the Xbox. It's actually just a physical spring-based pass-through uh, to hit, I guess, this guy right here. Now this, this was always the hard part of the original Xbox. If, you're, if you've ever taken one of those apart, getting the back connector, oh, much easier on the new one. Uh, so this is more of those kind of hook and, hook and loop things. And you can see them here too. So the trick is you need to release these little clamps here uh, on both sides without actually having access to them. You have to jam a really long screwdriver. And you can actually just, it looks like you can actually just push it down this, uh, down this groove here in the plastic wedge and keep moving down and do that from both ends and it'll just pop off. Yeah, the black screws look like they go all the way through. And then these guys are going to hold the motherboard onto the, the chassis. Uh, and then the interesting thing is this is the back of the heatsink. So one of the things that makes the Valhalla Xbox, the new Xbox 360S, different is that instead of having two, conveniently I have an old Falcon board here to compare, instead of having two separate chips on the motherboard, uh, this is the GPU and this is the CPU, the Valhalla design puts both of those chips under one heat sink, uh, uh, under one heat sink pan. So it should be easier to maintain and, and less, less points of failure, and also less heat to dissipate through the system. See, big giant long screws go all the way through. That's interesting because if you look at this, you can see the old motherboard itself is actually bigger than the new Xbox. Even though the new Xbox doesn't look that much smaller, it's actually a pretty, pretty good shrink down for the, from the classic. Aha, the sticker, the hidden sticker. Uh, tricky, tricky Microsoft. Uh, okay, so now this is, it seems like the top of the case and it just pops off. So uh, all this stuff is EM shielding to keep, uh, keep you from, you know, having all sorts of electromagnetic interference in your house from the incredible amount of energy put out by this thing. Okay, so now uh, optical drive should just lift out, and it does. That's surprising. Okay, so I'm popping the cables off the back, which you can't see, but it's just a standard SATA connector. And then there's a weird little eight pin uh, power thing that's actually kind of different from a normal uh, SATA power connector or whatever. I'm sure it's wired the same, it's just a different connector. So you can't just take a normal, you know, DVD drive and drop it in this guy and have it work. Um, interesting thing of note, and Nan pointed this out in his breakdown, but I think it's kind of cool. 
Uh, the the back of the drive, where it actually hits the chassis, has this rubber gasket around the edge, which should help dampen vibrations. One of the things that makes the 360S a little bit quieter than the OG 360. Okay, so now uh, you can see here's where the, the hard drive actually goes in. We can probably even slide it in. Um, see, it slides in here. This is just a normal SATA connector, uh, SATA power and, and uh, data. So, I mean, this is the SATA power side, this is SATA data. It looks like it's just a normal two and a half inch notebook hard drive, notebook style hard drive. Oh, um, let's, before we go any further, let's take this front panel off. Because I would bet that that's holding some stuff in place. Interestingly, you can see the difference on the front panel buttons. The old, the old Xbox, conveniently I have the button for that here. Uh, you can see it has the two, these lights actually are, are lights that are being shown, shown up through the board. The lights are actually on the board. These are just kind of diffusers. Uh, and then these show through the bezel to show you the green or red rings, whatever you're doing. And you can see the lights here, and then the physical button is right here. This is actually a new thing, so there's no physical button on this. It's all just a capacitive touch sensor on the front. Uh, the lights are still, I assume, let's see if I can get this guy off. Budger to the rescue again. So see, there's still the lights around the edges. Here, that's what these little little tiny guys are right here. Plus, there's a light in the center, but the button's gone. So there's no button on the new on the new design Xbox bezel. And that just pops off. So, so see, there's a little connector here. It almost looks like a USB connector, but it's not. Uh, and and uh, then of course the U2 USB panel uh, ports on the front uh, for you know, memory sticks, controllers, whatever. Okay, so next I'm gonna take off these two screws right here, which I'm pretty sure are for the cooling mechanism. Let me get over here, let's see if we can lift this whole guy out now. Still screwed in a couple of places, including here. This is a much tighter design. There's another one right here. Much tighter design than the previous Xbox 360, which was positively spacious in comparison. Okay, so I think that's all of it on this side. Let's see what's holding me here. It seems like in this case, I'm just hung up on an edge or something, so I'm gonna do a little bit of forcing. Actually, no, I'm gonna take the fan out. Uh, this is just like slot covers. I don't even know what it's there for, but it goes over the USB and makes it more difficult to plug in your stuff, it seems like. I might not put that back on and we put it back together. Okay, so then this guy is the, uh, holds on the, the SATA power and data for the hard drive. So we're gonna pop that out, and then it just lifts out as you can see. It should make this whole assembly come out a little bit easier. He doesn't want, I mean, I don't, I can't, oh, there we go, okay. So there was a little notch here that was just getting hooked up underneath the CPU fan cooler. Um, this is just the drive caddy for the for the hard drive and it's kind of boring frankly. Uh, the last thing are the four bottom screws. Uh, these are for the, the CPU GPU cooler. Okay so this is this is actually this is interesting I've never seen this before in a PC. It's just a shroud uh, with a piece of foam around the edge that snugs in just around the CPU uh, CPU fan. And, and it's kind of neat because it just dampens sound from the fan vibration. So uh, no other reason than that it looks like. Although there may be some shrouding. It may do, um, let's see, how does it go? It goes in like this. I can't imagine. All it's gonna do is make sure that air gets sucked in uh, through the side panel in the, in the right way. So you suck cool air in from the outside rather than hot air. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the motherboard out of the case. This is where things start to get really exciting. Um, if you're looking for the moment of no return, this is it. No more screws. Turn off 360 controller before removing hard disk. What about removing the motherboard? Oh, nope, that's it. I would be very interested to know where this giant thing was. Oh, that's what it was. It's the, it's the, it's for the uh, optical drive. So I don't forget, I'm gonna put it back more or less in the right place. Okay, so this is the Xbox's motherboard. Uh, as you can see, the CPU fan and cooler is held in place with this kind of fancy bracket. It's the same thing that was on the Falcon, more or less. Uh, it looks like it might be a little bit easier to get off. I'm going to uh, use a pair of pliers, because that's what I've always used in the past. 
Okay, so then this guy just pops off. There we go. So it just pops. Uh, you grab it at the end, trying not to get the screw, the, the hole rather. Uh, there we go. Looks like you need to get all three off. Voila. Okay, so for the big reveal, this is, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the CPU fan. This is the new Xbox 360 CPU. You can see copper core CPU cooler, just like in a modern PC. Um, but you can see this, the CPU GPU combination is underneath this guy. Uh, this gray stuff is just kind of thermal compound. It's something that you use between a CPU and a cooler to even out uh, any kind of dips or divots or whatever in the surface, even if they're microscopic. And, uh, and that's it, that's the Xbox 360 uh, to compare. So this is the same orientation. Uh, this is the GPU, this is the CPU. You can see all these lines on the, on the board are a high-speed interconnect between the CPU and the GPU. Because this has them all on one, on one chip, it doesn't need that. They're connected in the same, on, you know, on the die. Uh, and it's a much simpler board in comparison to the older one. It means it's a little bit cheaper to produce, and hopefully, if, we, if all goes well, a little uh, less likely to fail. So now it's time to put this thing back together. Uh, well, wish me luck. A little bit under two hours later, everything seems to be back in place. I have one mysterious screw left. I, I looked, I don't really know where it goes. Let's see if it works. I'm plugged in, uh, power's connected. I'm gonna hit the button, see what happens. The light's on, it made the ding. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Conveniently, there was already a game in. I believe it was Dynasty Warriors Empires, which is, uh, I'm told, a, a classic from the Far East. So, uh, screen's coming up. Everything looks pretty good so far. I guess we'll start the game and uh, call it a success. You sign in as my profile. You may remember her AAAAA -A -A -A, uh, from last week's quick look. It, kind of Asian y Felicia Day, I think. Um, I'm going to start the game. It sees it. The drive seems to be working. Hard drive profiles are working. I feel pretty good about this. So uh, let's call this one a huge success and sign off. For Tested, I'm Will Smith. <laughs>